Welcome to the next in the series of a uh, walk through Wien Kun Kam uh, using uh, Gary Harbottle Johnson's wonderful book entitled Wien Kum Kam Atlantis of Lana. Uh, it's termed a history and visitor's guide. The book itself is out of print, so uh, you need to go into a second hand bookshop somewhere and find it. It's a uh, precious book. You really need a copy of this when you come to Wien Kum Kam uh, or uh, come here with uh, a tour group, uh, maybe uh, something like uh, Chiang Mai a la carte. I'll leave a, a link in the description below. Uh, there is so much here at Wien Kum Kam for you to see if only you knew where to find it and also if only you could actually understand what you're seeing because most of it was only found back in the 1980s. All of the temples that uh, are shown above ground have had some restoration uh, at some stage. There are three sites here in this same plot of land. Well this site on the south uh, is uh, explained in Gary Harbottle Johnson, uh, his book, as the oldest. Uh, this is the one contemporary with uh, King Mingrai uh, when he was here in the 12, 1290s. Uh, it's the one with the elephant's heads and uh, we see here just how beautiful that looks and how it must have looked in its time. 11, 12 and 13 collectively called Wat Hua Nong uh, due to a nearby reservoir. There's some water over the back. Uh, it was excavated in 1988 by the Fine Arts Department. There are three separate temple styles which were combined into one temple complex. Of the three, Gary suspects that Site 11 may prove to be the oldest. There is evidence of Mon and Khmer influence uh, in the arrangement of three chedis to the west of the Vahan, similar to the triple prang arrangement visible uh, at Lopburi, Wat Arun in Bangkok and other major sites including Angkor Wat. The single chedi on the north side of Wat Hua Nong south site, site 11, uh, on the north side of the Vihan, a separated pinnacle stone placed on top of it also shows Khmer Prang style, uh, rounded and fluted as opposed to the typical Lana conical point. Well I can tell you here in 2022 there is very little evidence of points, there is very little evidence of uh, you know high things. Uh, it's a bit of a shame reading this book dating back to 2000, uh, 2002. Uh, Gary talks uh, a lot about the what he saw at that point and I just wonder as to whether I'm seeing a lot less now because I don't see quite the detail that he's talking about. The central western chedi appears to have been re renovated or repaired at least once before the arrival of the fine arts department and displays crouching elephants around the base. They are visible on the south side although the centre figure appears to have been re removed recently as witnessed by a pale mark to the brickwork and regularity of the row. Fine Arts Department indicate all four sides have these statues which is a feature also evidenced in Chiang Mai's oldest temples. Site number 12 is right over the far side there and site 13 uh, is over by that red roof over there. So to lump all this together as one temple, uh, <laughs> it's a bit sad really, uh, especially when the Fine Arts Department have uh, actually done a lovely video of the area and you can see that it's quite an expanse. <laughs> Wat Hua Nong is the name given to the temple in the present day, as its actual name has not been found in any historical records. Archaeological excavations at the temple found the remains of an assembly hall, stupa, ordination hall, pavilion, and gateway. The stupa had crouching elephant statues around its base, five elephants on each side. These crouching elephant statues are similar to those at Wat Jdc Hong in Sukhothai. 
Now you may have noticed I don't actually uh, do a lot of walking on these uh, ruins. Uh, I make exceptions because I, I need to see uh, something to show you and also uh, I know that certain areas have been restored so I'm not walking uh, you know, on all of the ruins. Up here this is uh, paved back in uh, you know, the year 2000 and if I look closely, I'd probably find a date somewhere. But uh, Gary Harbottle Johnson talks about these pillars that uh, you can see here. There's one pillar here, uh, another, another, another. So these pillars would have held a magnificent roof over this huge structure. And uh, up here would have been, I can only presume, a giant Buddha based upon what we know today, what we know about temples and their layouts today. And in Gary Harbottle Johnson's book there is a sketch map of uh, where these places are and where I'm walking right now uh, across here there is a road that comes up from there all the way up to here. It, he was suggesting that there was a thoroughfare that went from the north here down to the south, that uh, there was actually a main street thoroughfare that may well have uh, provided a gate at the south uh, end of this uh, walled city. I'm walking north up here, uh, up towards the, it looks like a gate, uh, but uh, it's the entrance to the temple. Now if we talk about Hua Nong, the northwest uh, site, the floor plan of this temple unit does not match any other floor plan found in Wien Kum Kam. So you see Gary's uh, drawing here. Uh, it's quite an amazing looking thing with all of these raised bits and pieces either side. Uh, and what he's saying is that uh, there's a walkway elevated about one and a half metres above the old ground level at the height below the Vihan main floor. The plan view of the Chedi shows an irregular shape contributing to the walkway rather than caused by it. And the three shelves to the northeast and west may have held Buddha images. The minor low level platforms to the same size show evidence of current use as altars on the walkway. The small walls at the Chedi face are of unknown purpose, but may have enclosed more Buddha images. To the rear of the Vihan, on the north side, so this is this one here, the double stairs are an unusual feature, especially the western set descending into small courtyard bounded by western side of the wall, almost one metre thick. The main entrance to the Vihan may have been accessed from hypothesized road running down from the river 50 metres to the north, which may have been a bridge. So here we can see what Gary's talking about of this uh, walkway here to the north and then these terraces off to the sides. And they are not like any other design of temple that's seen here. So as you can see here from the list of sites, 11, 12, 13, what Hua Nong, uh, they range from AD 11th century through to the 16th century. And uh, they're all lumped as one name, but the date range is quite wide. And 500 years of activity in this place uh, are lost because of the state of the archeology span uh, work that's been done. I have read uh, a report about the paleontal channels throughout the north uh, of Chiang Mai here and looked at the report that says this is the current course of the river and these are the other courses of water uh, that flow through this part of Thailand. The detail in that report is incredible, but the conclusion of that report suggests that more work needed to be done because none had been done so far about finding the evidence of dating of the deposits of when floods occurred, of when, uh, you know, of when something was uh, in use and when it dried up and when it became extinct. 
there is not that knowledge, there is not that detail understood. Now secondly, when you read Gary Harbottle's very interesting book uh, about the ruins that we see here and there are guesstimations of date ranges of places, I've said in the previous video about, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have something uh, objective, a piece of dated evidence to say this was from this period uh, throughout these uh, ruins and to understand, therefore, joining with the irrigation uh, investigation and also for the archaeological investigation to understand timings because unless you understand the timings of things, you don't appreciate the, the, the problems that people suffered. You don't appreciate that this was inhabited by as many people as you know, can be estimated by some of that evidence. It doesn't explain what was in use and what was out of use by dates as, as well as it could be. Now, maybe somebody in the back of their head and left it off the corner of their, their notepad at some time and it's not reached to the, you know, the public domain. Maybe there is evidence out there. But, you know, I've read uh, Alyssa's paper about the water. I've read Gary Harbottle's book about Wienkum Cam. And it doesn't come through in that as to when precisely the flood took place that wiped out all of we in Kum Kam. So to go along with the theory that we in Kum Kam faded and therefore it became derelict in phases, people moved away, people moved away, people moved away, and especially after King Meng Rai established Chiang Mai just five kilometres up the way, uh, you know, the on the other side of the riverbank, uh, it then makes you feel that there must have been civilization here for an awful long time, but you don't appreciate how much civilization. It would be lovely to know uh, because these ruins are huge. It's not just you know one temple. There are thirty plus temples in the in the area that are derelict, and you make it makes you wonder. You know, of all these temples, they needed to be built. They needed to be maintained. They were serviced. They were, you know attended by people with, um, with love, with care, uh, making uh, traditional offerings, making uh, you know, festivities around these temples. We may never know, um, you know the volume of that because we don't understand the evidence that's in the ground. Now finally in this one area uh, I'm bringing you over to see Wat Huanong Northeast. The third uh, temple complex uh, within this site uh, is referred to by Gary Harbottle Johnson as the most extensive and representative of a co temple complex. Before 1988 excavations, this site uh, and the adjacent 11 and 12 was covered with Lam Yai plantation and grass. Significantly, these three temples are undated on the finance plinth. That these three sites were combined and important to the city is undisputed, in part due to the artefacts found here, including pieces of stone inscription bearing the early Lana Fakam script. It is possible that the ancient renovations discovered may have been carried out by kings of Mengrai dynasty. Porch in the north-west corner, the tallest building, has stucco remnants low down on each corner and in them can be identified some nice examples of animal carvings, swans, elephants and kilin, a type of dragon, similar to Chinese style. These animal figures are surrounded by flowers, leaves and spiral carvings. The inner faces of the porch show recesses for swinging doors, although all signs of the hinges have disappeared. To the north side of the porch is a paved road or walkway which due to its elevation, must have led to either a staircase or possibly a bridge across the river, whose southern bank would have been less than 10 metres north at this point. Within this site are the bases of Vihan, Ubersot, Mandapar, Chedi and a well 
in addition to the porch and many boundary walls. The embankment along the north side of this site and Site 12 masks the location of the original Mer Ping riverbank, which was about 10 metres from the porch and between sites 12 and 13 may have been a major city gate and entrance road, precedent for such uh, entrances, especially on the north head side of the city, can be found in many Lana cities and towns. It would be interesting to see further excavation in that area as it may greatly increase our knowledge of Wien Kum Kam. Well, if you get a chance to go to the place where you pick up the pony and cart, uh, the tour guide uh, centre uh, for Wien Kum Kam, based on the Middle Ring Road, uh, you will be able to see some artefacts that were taken out of various places around Wien Kum Kam. And I believe I've seen there uh, some of the uh, figures, the animal figures that were stucco, that were the plaster that you'd have seen on the uh, entrance wall here. There are slight remnants of things here, but uh, it's very difficult to see them because they've been so damaged by weather and people. I'll uh, leave a link in the description below to the Fine Arts Department QR code that uh, if you scan it uh, here it'll take you off to YouTube and the link below will take you there too and you'll see there they've done a lovely flyover of the uh, place uh, entire area and it's very attractive it, it gives you some sort of idea of the scale of it and uh, is, is, is well worth looking at uh, but uh, yeah this place is huge there's not a lot above the ground and you can't really see it by walking through it because it's all flat so you don't get uh, something uh, of a bird's eye view which you would get in uh, a drone video so uh, I'll, I'll leave the link to that uh, QR code and this single uh, sign here for the entire Wat Hua Nong uh, says is the name given to the temple in the present day as its actual name has not been found in any historical records. Can you believe that? If this is the you know the largest site here how come they haven't found anything? Maybe it's because of the you know, lamy lam orchards and the, uh, you know, all the grass that was covering it. Maybe they had forgotten it. Archaeological excavations at the temple found remains of an assembly hall, stupa, ordination hall, pavilion and gateway. The stupa is decorated by crouching elephant statues around its base. What else way over there? That's, a th that's the first one I took you to, that's site 11. These elephant statues are similar to those at Chedi Si Hong in Sukhothai, which suggests the influence of Sri Lankan Buddhism, tradition that spread from Sukhothai around five, six hundred years ago. Other buildings are Lana style that can be commonly seen in Wincombe Cam. Common, common, common. How can you lump three sites into one? This is ridiculous. I'm amazed. I'm absolutely stunned to see these three areas, three, three uh, defined uh, periods, styles, all lumped into one on one sign. Hey, uh, you know, Fine Arts Department, maybe you got tired after the first couple that you did, but this one surely needed more information on a board than just this. <laughs> Why did you lump it all together? Anyway, um, I'm going to love you and leave you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed Gary Harbottle Johnson's walk around here and uh, what he had to say about it. Because to me, if you didn't hear what Gary Harbottle Johnson has to say about this or saw his little drawings about the place, you wouldn't appreciate really that there was so much to see here. So thank you very much for watching this video uh, about uh, sites 11, 12 and 13. I'll be going on to sites 14 and upwards uh, in the next video and uh, I hope you enjoy those as much as you've enjoyed this. There are now, I believe, uh, three, four videos preceding this one uh, talking about Wien Kung Cam and uh, I will leave a, a link above to the playlist so that you can catch up on those if you've not seen them already. What a wonderful place this is. I think you should come here and enjoy it. I certainly am, and uh, I'll come again. Take care, bye-bye.